As someone with a criminal record, as someone who has spent time in prison, even though I received a conditional pardon that terminated that prison sentence, and even though in less than a month I will be done with the probation, the parole, the supervised release that was pursuant to that pardon, even though I have a free and clear US passport, there are 38 countries across the planet that I cannot legally travel to. Now I say legally because I'm sure the reality on the ground, whether that's through bribery or the way they apply policy, is gonna be different than what's on paper. But I wanna go over what those countries are and I wanna talk about the designations. So the first is a policy that we will deny you up front. So if you show up, we will ask you about your criminal record and we will not let you into the country. The second is denied if discovered, which basically says we'll let you in, but if during the course of your time in this country, we discover that you have a criminal record, we're gonna expel you. Now to me, that seems like either the opportunity to ask for bribes or the opportunity to get rid of bad actors because they probably wouldn't find that information out unless you committed a crime or caused a ruckus or they had some reason to arrest you or run your record. That policy actually makes sense to me. The third designation is no restriction. You are allowed in that country. The EU is like that. The EU widely says you're allowed in. Now that's gonna change next year and I'll talk about the paperwork for that later, but for current status, I could go to the EU right now with no background check, no visa, no anything. And the fourth status is, well, we don't really know. There's no official policy on this, which means again, it's very much gonna be at the discretion of the person you're dealing with. The first country that I find kind of ironic is Argentina. Now Argentina was the number one destination for Nazis leaving Germany after after World War II, but right now, if you go there and you have a criminal record, you will be denied up front. They will run your name, they'll run your record, they'll ask you about it, and they will not let you in the country. Australia is the same way. And Australia was famously a penal colony. It was where people were sent from England. And additionally, a lot of people don't know this, but that's part of what the United States was. England sent the people they didn't want over there. Like, hey, we're just gonna expel you to the United States. And the United States also has a similar policy. Austria and Belgium both allow you in because they're a part of the EU and they have the open policy. Brazil will deny you if discovered. And what that means is, again, they'll let you in the country, but if they have some reason to arrest you or evaluate you, they determine you have a criminal record, they have the right to expel you or the policy in place to expel you. This is similar, this is Cambodia. Now Canada, it's a Commonwealth country, the UK, Canada and Australia will not let you in. You will be denied up front. They even deny people with misdemeanor DUIs or DWIs. And I've heard plenty of stories of people who went up there for a hunting trip, went up there for a visit, were stopped at the border and were not allowed in. Chile will deny if discovered. Again, I'm allowed in, I can go travel around, but if they run my name and they find out they have the right to expel me. China will deny me up front. Now I know this isn't entirely true because I I do know somebody who has a criminal record who has traveled through China for work. So apparently there are exceptions or there are ways to get around it, but the general policy is you'll be denied if you have a criminal record. Croatia, again, will allow me in. Cuba will deny me up front, which again, considering all the politics around the US and Cuba is an interesting thing. I actually know somebody who tried to run to Cuba and one of them got away. There were these two brothers I was locked up in Virginia. One of them made it to Cuba, which just blows my mind. And he was accepted and kind of considered a hero. So strange that now that, you know, politics have changed, you're not allowed in if you have a criminal record. The Czech Republic and Denmark, again, EU will allow me in. The Dominican Dominican Republic will deny me if discovered. If they run the record, they'll find out. Same with Egypt. Estonia will allow me in. Ethiopia will deny me if discovered. Finland, France, Germany, and Greece will allow me in. Hong Kong will deny me if discovered. Though I wonder if that's changed because remember Hong Kong used to be a British protectorate and it wasn't actually in control or China wasn't actually in control. I know it's still kind of an independent place, but I know largely China has taken control of the island. So I'm not sure if that's different or that's just a policy because it's a more international or cosmopolitan city. Hungary will allow me in as will Iceland. And I really want to see Iceland. I, I gotta say, people have always told me about the Aurora Borealis or however you pronounce it. They've told me about the sites and I just, I would love to see Iceland. It's one of the places on my bucket list. India will deny me up front. So if I have a criminal record, there is no going to India. But again, I know of people who have a record who for business reasons have gone into India and been welcomed probably because they were bringing investment or they're bringing something else. Indonesia will deny me if discovered. Iran will deny me up front. Ireland will deny me if discovered, which means I can at least get in the gate. Now, obviously we have the difference of what is, you know, Northern and Southern, uh, Northern Ireland and, you know, the UK Ireland and how this works. And, but I can at least get into Ireland. Israel will deny me up front. Italy will allow me in because of the EU. Japan and Kenya will deny me up front. And Japan is one of those places it's been the hardest for people to get into. Plenty of celebrities. I think Snoop Dogg and Mike Tyson were prevented from going to Japan because of their criminal records. Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg will allow me in. Macau will deny me up front. Again, very similar to the Chinese policy. Malaysia will deny me if discovered. Malta will allow me in. Mexico, Morocco, and Nepal will deny me if discovered. Now, if anybody lives on the southern border of the United States, you know it's really easy to go to Mexico. I can get across the border. It's just a matter of not getting arrested or not getting interrogated or not having my name run to where they find out my history. The Netherlands will allow me in. New Zealand will deny me up front. And if you know any Kiwis, I've never seen a happier, more like abundant, more amazing group of people. I would love to go visit New Zealand, but again, it sounds like that's out of the way. Norway will let me in. Peru and the Philippines will deny me if discovered, which again means I can go to the Philippines. I just can't get caught or they can't find out that I have a record or however that works. Portugal and Poland will let me in. Singapore will deny me if discovered. And Singapore is a really interesting state. I, I While I was in prison, I had a pen pal who was over there. The mix of cultures and how densely people are packed in and the politics of the 
area and how clean it is. Just, it's a fascinating place to me. People have talked about it being an authoritarian government or they're very strict on things because they used to have the death penalty for drugs. There were all kinds of things in place, but it's a really fascinating place and I would, wouldn't mind visiting just to see the experience. Slovakia and Slovenia will allow me in because of the EU. South Africa says they will deny me up front, but I know this can't actually be right. There has to be a visa process because the largest collection of formerly incarcerated college graduates was in South Africa two years ago because I was invited. I just couldn't figure out how to go. I couldn't deal with probation parole and I couldn't afford it. South Korea will deny me if discovered, which means I could at least get in. And I have a friend in, in Seoul right now who says it's just amazing. It's just one of those experiences that will change your life. So I wouldn't mind visiting there one day. Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland, again, will allow me in. Taiwan will deny me up front. And Taiwan, obviously, with the interpersonal politics of Taiwan and China and all the things that are going on in that sea, uh, could be very ugly or very interesting. But again, for business reasons, because the majority of computer chips in the world, if this is still the case, are produced in Taiwan. So I'm sure business exceptions would be made if I happen to know or bring some value to that sector. Tanzania, Tunisia, Turkey, and Ukraine will deny me if discovered, as will the United Emirates. And I actually had somebody reach out to me today on social media saying, hey, I have a record and I've been living in Ukraine for the past 18 months. Uh, I had a weird, interesting opportunity where somebody was uh, smuggling like, you know, humanitarian aid to the Ukraine that I'm pretty sure was actually weapons. And they were asking me if I would be interested in doing something like that. And I was like, well, let me get off probation. Let me deal with like the legal issues here before I start talking about what's going on on the other side of the planet. But I remember thinking that was interesting. And the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, I've had a number of people reach out to me because they have moved from wherever they were. They've emigrated to Dubai either for tax reasons or because they just wanted a new start because there's so much startup money there. The government is basically giving money away to people who have innovative ideas or doing something creative and new. And people said, hey, if you want to come over here, there's a lot of money if you want to start something. Now, I don't know what that would look like, but I do think it's interesting that I could at least get in the door and figure that out. Now, the last two, the United Kingdom and the United States will deny you up front. Now, I'm a US citizen, so once I leave the country, I should still be able to go back. I do have, after all, an American passport. But it's interesting, again, to think that we're very critical of other countries not allowing people in. And we have one of the strictest immigration policies or even visa policies in the world. So again, it looks like I'll be able to go to the EU. Next year, the EU is putting into place this anti-terrorism policy that looks at and asks people about their criminal records. And I was concerned because this is very similar to the policy they use in the UK. And the UK very explicitly says, I will not be able to come in. However, I read the policy the other day, somebody sent it to me. And when I looked at it, I only have to self-report convictions that have been in the last 15 years. So even though I got out of prison less than three years ago, the wording says convictions within the past 15 years. My conviction was 22 years ago. I spent 19 years in prison. Now I'm almost three years out. So I don't even have to report the fact that I had a criminal record. I don't have to report the fact that I went to prison. So I should still be able to travel across the EU free and clear even after this year. And I was really worried about that because I don't have the money. I don't have the resources to go there right now, but I'd love to see Europe. I want to see the whole world. Again, I'm going to have a lot of limitations. I don't know what that looks like, but I'm trying to take it piece by piece or bite by bite. So if there's a way to get to Europe, I've actually put a bunch of proposals in to go to Norway to examine their prison system and talk about it from the perspective of someone who was incarcerated in America and the different conditions and just kind of do a media piece around that because hopefully we would have funding in it that would get me over there. And two, it would hopefully highlight the differences. It would highlight to Americans or maybe to Norwegians just how different our systems are. Talk about the benefits and the cost. I think a lot of times people take this absolutist view like their economy is better and their social system is better. No, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the nuances. Let's talk about what works better and what doesn't. And it may be true that the Norwegian prison system just works a whole lot better than ours, but I'm sure there's some flaws or some things they would like to change or they would like to address. And I would love to have those conversations. I'd love to get to the kind of bottom of the issue. So I don't know what my travel is going to look like, but I know in less than a month I'm off probation. I don't have to check in with anybody. I'm going to try to put as many stamps as possible on this. I've got to figure out what that looks like and where I'm going and what I'm doing. But when I do, I'm going to document it and I hope you'll come along with me.